Nilikuwa natafuta rafiki atakaye kuwa wa kudumu Nilikuwa nimekosa tumaini kwani binadamu hubadilika kama kinyonga e, tangu nikupate Yesu sitafuti tena upendo wako unanipa nguvu nikiwa na we Yesu nitaogopa nani nitaogopa nini e, ujulikane ujulikane Yesu ujulikane 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 Yesu ujulikane najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwamini fumilele najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwaminifu milele 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 tena nikapata marafiki kadhaa bunde shida ilipoingia nao waliondoka nikalia mpaka nilipokumbuka kuwa kuna rafiki asiyebadilika eh tangu nikupate Yesu sitafuti tena upendo wako unanipa nguvu nikiwa na we Yesu nitaogopa nani nitaogopa nini eh ujulikane ujulikane Najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwaminifu milele Najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwaminifu milele milele Asante nimekuja KTN tangu nilipofika show ya Sunday best nimeipenda tena nikabarikiwa sasa narudi kwele na ushuhuda nasema ni Asante nimekuja KTN tangu nilipofika show ya Sunday best nimeipenda tena nikabarikiwa sasa narudi kwele na ushuhuda kwa wewe hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwamini fumilele najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwamini fumilele milele 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 najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwamini fumilele najua hutaniacha pawe na shida basi we wewe ni mwaminifu milele 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 all right welcome back karibu tena we are on sunday best at kt and home it's good to have you again always a pleasure having you so that we can get to have a conversation together uh, it, as much as we feed the the physical man it is very important to feed the spiritual man and that's why we bring you 
such opportunities. Today I'm with uh, Pastor Joyce Charles. We are talking about the move of God and of course getting beautiful music from, you know, the high school boys from uh, Kolel uh, High School and Gilgil, you know, taking us back to our Christian Union days in high school and reminiscing beautiful things and see what God has done many years later. Uh, he's still a faithful God, all right? So, Karibu Sana. Uh, Pastor Joyce, it's good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Uko Salama? Kabisa. Uko Blessed? Yes. You know, when I saw you before I got to be connected to you, right? Um, I saw your photo, uh -huh. one of the posters. Right. So, I was very cautious uh, on how I speak to you. I, I, I thought you, do, you don't speak any Swahili. What? What did you see? That I I'm not Kenya. Oh <laughs> I'm Joyce W. Charles, so the W is actually Wanjiro. Allah? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Karim Buzanabari, it's good to have you. Thank you so much. And thank you for making time to, to, to you know, just speak to us right. and to our viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a pri uh, privilege for me to be here. Uh, I really admire what you do, and thank we thank you. God for being here to do this. Amen. And so, uh, when you said I come, I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> come, I'm all in. So, all yeah, right. we thank God. Great, you're in ministry, and yes. you're doing amazing things in ministry. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us some of the things you do. Are you a bishop, an apostle? Are you a prophet? Are you a pastor or are you just a simple woman of God doing ministry? I think I love the last <laughs> part. <laughs> All right. So, number one, I'm married. I have a, a husband, a man. Yes. Yes. Very important. Very important. Squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to say that. Yes. So, uh -huh. my husband is Pastor Charles. We have two children. Right. Uh, one is 12, the other one is seven years old. Ah. Yes, nice. so uh, we are in ministry. We are actually pastors in a church called Mountain of Deliverance. Right. And other than that, now we run our own ministry, which is the Watchers Hub International. Right. Maybe that is where you saw me. Yes, that's where I saw you. Yes. So, so, so what exactly do you do at the Watchers Hub? Uh, the Watchers Hub is a ministry that basically began uh, during COVID. So mm. we just began to pray online. My husband and I have planted a church in South Africa years ago. All right. And so uh, we have had people that have followed us all along. And of course, with COVID, uh, we, we had to do more online meetings mm -hmm. and prayer. And so we began to have uh, quite a number of people following us from different parts of the world. Right. And so to cut the story short, last year, um, <coughs> I was in the US and then the Lord told me that we need to fish every fish. So mm -hmm. we knew other than just being online, uh, because where we are pastoring, we are not senior pastors. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said that we need now to go in the field and, of course, do a few things. Right. So that's when we began with the Watchers Hub now, international, but now not online. Uh, ah. We still do the online, but we're now doing the in physical meet meetings right. here. So we began um, this year, March. That's when we had our first conference. Mm. Uh, we called Apostle Michael Rockpo. And we had an amazing time. Right. And then uh, we had, actually, we, we have major, major events through the year. Mm. We've gone very, very fast. We had um, Akesha, when we were praying for Kenya for the elections. Yes. We had uh, Lawrence Oyo. <laughs> We had an amazing time. Then we have a we had a big big uh, crusade in Kitengela, mm. and then we actually I think two weeks ago we came from Nyeri. Right. We went to eleven schools. We had a thousand and eight wow. souls coming to the Lord. Amazing. We had an innovation for high schools. Wow! So we had like ten missioners. We went to every school that would open their doors to us, mm. and we still had a tent meeting going on <laughs> in the CBD in Nyeri. <laughs> Sorry. And so um, so that's basically what we do. Mm -hmm. We do, um, like the topic today <coughs> is a move of God. So basically what we do, we, we go to the people and do things that are awakening people, things that bring forth the revival, and uh, not forgetting the call, fish right. every fish. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's very powerful. No wonder you've seen the high school students <coughs> and your heart just... I was excited. <laughs> Very encouraging. <coughs> wow. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you know, we are talking about the move of God. Right. And what a, what a way, or, um, you know, you're the right kind of person to speak into this because it is something that is happening. Yes. <coughs> and you know what? Something is shifting. 
<coughs> Absolutely. There's something shifting in our lives, in our nation. Mm -hmm. Just before the elections, we saw great things happening. Exactly. During the election period. Yes. Even whatever we saw during that entire period and after speaks of something. Yes. Great happening. Uh -huh. And uh, if you have ears, you will see that. Yes. So tell us what is happening before we delve deeper. Yes, actually right now you don't need to be prophetic to know God is busy doing something. Right. You just have to have eyes uh -huh. and look and uh -huh. see God is busy doing something. Uh, so basically what is happening right now is that God is awakening his church, I mean his bride, mm. because uh, I think we've heard for a long time that we are in the last days. Right. But we know very well that Christ will not come when we are still at this juncture. Right. The bride has to be found in a state that is beautiful. And so God is just preparing us. And um, there, there, there is a way that there is actually a progression before you mm. can find revival in every nation, mm. a community, or in the body of Christ. There is actually a progression. So basically what is happening now, you will realize that... Um, in in days past, there was a, a, like during COVID, yes. things were just quiet. People are discouraged. Oh, yeah. People fell off mm. the wagon, you oh, know. Yeah. And some have never recovered. Actually, yes. Mm. And people, some people are hurt because I mean their family members died or they yeah. fell let down. They lost their job. So we are coming from a ditch spiritually. Mm. And what happens for the move of God to go into any? nation or into any community first of all you we need to understand that revival is based or the move of god is basically god giving us extra of his measure mm. the measure of the spirit like right. more of him right and why does he do that because there is decadence like what we saw during COVID, even before then yeah so when when god brings revival is because he's giving us more of himself and so um what happens is that you're gonna see prior to the move of God, there are things you're going to see, like a generation that doesn't really know God, they're in mm. church, mm. but they don't go God, don't know God very well. Right. You're going to see things like the love of the world. Mm. You look at the church, mm. but you can see there is the love of the world. Like we kind of mingle right. the world with the church. Right. So when you see these things, there is something, it looks very negative, but actually there is something that is gonna end up good mm. because God will not just leave his church to just go into a rusty mode and he doesn't do anything. Right. So those are the things that begin. You mm. see that you see the community is all the way down. You will see that people don't people don't have much desire for God anymore. People are just backsliding. This but then, discouragement on yes, another level. Yes. Yeah. But then what God does, you will realize that he begins now to cause uh, the trumpet to sound in Zion and mm. there is an alarm. Right. Now, when that happens, uh, I'm just trying to explain the progression now. Yes. How the move of God comes. Mm -hmm. When there is a sound of an alarm, what happens is that you're going to notice specific voices that you cannot ignore. Mm. So, if you look at Africa right now, you will notice their voices whether you like it or you don't like it. Whether you are a bishop, or just mm. a church member. Right. They will speak to the nations, they will speak to a continent globally. Mm. And that's why there is an apostolic move. Because what they do, they come to awaken us. Right. When they speak to us, we get hungry. When they speak to us, we get the burden. Ahem? Th there's, there's something you mentioned very powerful, the apostolic move. Yes. Um, it's jargon to some people. Okay. And, and I've heard it of late, yes. big time. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Uh, apostolic move is basically when, uh, you see, when, when Christ died, resurrected, mm. there was an apostolic move. All right. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, he told them, you go to Jerusalem. So those are the apostles. Yes. Uh -huh. And if you look at their culture, their lifestyle, mm. and the gospel they preached, you understand what is an apostolic move. Uh -huh. Because apostles have a culture. Uh -huh. They have a gospel. They, s they preach the cross. Right. All right? Uh -huh. <laughs> right in there. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm speaking on behalf of that person who's watching. Yes. Apostles, of course, in this case, when we go back to when Christ, you know, died, resurrected, we're yes. talking about the disciples. Exactly. Right? Yes. So they have a culture. Yes. And you mentioned the cross. Yes. Because that was it for them yes the the crust they the crust christ they served uh -huh. 
was nailed on the cross yes. and died. Yes. They know no other message other that's than the gospel. that's the gospel. Yes. And the resurrection. Yes. Let's continue. Yes. <coughs> so that's basically the apostolic move. That's why na right now, if you look at the voices we're hearing in Africa, you will notice they're taking us back to the cross. Mm. They're taking us back to the apostolic culture, which maybe most of us will call it apostolic doctrine. Right. There is a doctrine of prayer and not wow. just prayer for 30 minutes mm. and you're checking your Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking Proper. about real prayer. Yeah. They're taking us back to really want to serve God. Mm. They're taking us back to a place of death to the flesh. Right. They're taking us back to a place of wanna, you know, wanna do the will of God no mm. matter the cost. Right. So that is what apostles come to do. Ah. They take us back to the originality of the gospel. Mm. And so uh, for example, just recently we saw um, one of our very own Reverend Julian Kuna, uh, yes. Kula right. brought uh, Joshua Salman. Right. That's uh, a the voice. Rema fest, right. Yes, you mm. cannot ignore. Mm. You see, True. <laughs> you there are men in Africa that God has been pointed right now. Yeah. You cannot ignore. Yeah. Like we are going to be bringing Apostle Michael Rockpo in December. Right. That's a voice. Yeah. You cannot ignore. And it's amazing yes. how Pastor Joyce. Yes. Uh, when there's, you know, a certain level of cold, uh -huh. something is ignited into the atmosphere. Yes. A very good example is the Rema Fest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just yes. made meaning yes, to people is. across the board. Yes. So I, I, I'm, I'm seeing it. Heaven That's is saying something. Yeah. And you see, th there were days when we would hear from the altar, uh, when we are told mm -hmm. that uh, you guys are not serious with the Lord, mm -hmm. all you do is listen to preachers on Facebook, on YouTube. Yes. Now, these guys that God is using as trumpeters right now, we have to agree that God has given them a voice. Right. And we cannot threaten people that people are eating from Facebook and YouTube because we have to listen to them. Right. The reason why people do that is because when the move of God is just about to take place or when it has taken off, we have a hunger mm. for specific food in the right. spirit. Right. That's why you're going to go searching on YouTube. And if you hear it, mm. you know that's the right sermon. Because on. your spirit is searching for something. Right. So I want to maybe speak to my fellow servants of God. Mm -hmm. Let's not be uh, you know, intimidated mm. or feel like these men are possibly coming to take our members. No. Right. Both as pastors and members, like we are that. hungering to listen to these people. Right. So you as my pastor, you're going to be seeking to listen to so and so. Mm. And I as a member will be seeking to listen to them True. because there is actually a call. Yeah. God is calling spiritual men. God right. is calling us to arise and awake. Right. So we need to listen to specific people. Mm -hmm. And their voice is the voice of reason, mm -hmm. is the voice of righteousness, right. is the voice of awakening. Right. They, they speak and we get burdens, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know. And when I mean burdens, I mean different burdens. If like, you're in the marketplace, yeah. God is going to empower you mm -hmm. to become more productive in the marketplace. That's true. Yes. You know what? Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, and we, we, I just want to hear about why it is important for any nation or a people or the church to, to, to receive the move of God. But as you talk about the people and intimidation, and you know we get into camps and say, no, 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 we are exalting this person too much. There's something that happened during the Rema Fest. Right. There's, there's a way I had ministry very different mm -hmm. from the way I've had it before, right. especially about my mandate when Apostle Selman shared about the warriors. Yes. I've never had it that way. And you got it. And I, it made so much meaning. Uh -huh. And I knew this is exactly my mandate yes, yes. And in the world. Yes. So it is important. Let's not push them aside mm -hmm. and think he, this one has come to pick my people and so on and so forth. So yes. I agree. Why is it important for? It is very important because how we, the body of Christ, respond to the messengers that God has sent yeah. is very, it's actually everything. Right. For example, if I send a messenger to you and you just like put Push a block, right. and it means then what they came to say or to do, they won't do it. Yeah. And now if that thing they came to do was to benefit you, right. then you have lost it. 
So it is important for us as a church, as a body of Christ in the nation of Kenya and also around the world. I know people are watching from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. When we have these people, we should, number one, of course, accept them, right. celebrate them. Mm -hmm. And again, we have to receive the word they have. Mm -hmm. If we're going to listen to them, right. the very same way we listen to any other someone out there, mm -hmm. we are going to miss it. There has to be an ear that will hear what right. God is saying through them. That's true. Where do we draw the line between receiving them, appreciating, celebrating them, but also not replacing them? That's a very good question. With Christ. Yeah, because that's that a very also good can question. happen. The reason why we don't even have to really like draw the line. Mm. You know why? They present Christ. Right. When you hear these men speak, when they are done, you don't see Micah or Rockpo, you don't see Joshua mm -hmm. Salmon, mm -hmm. you don't see, uh, and we have so many, so I'm not just mentioning those because yeah. they are special than the rest of them. They're quite a number, even right. around the world. Yeah. But you will not see them at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You will see Christ. Them. They take you to the cross, that's what I said. Wow. So when you are done listening to them, even if it's 100 times, mm. at the end of the day, you're not going to have your allegiance to so-and-so. Right. It is going to be to Christ. Because they release hunger. Mm. You can't hunger for a man. Right. You hunger for a spirit, the right. spirit of God. Come on. Yeah. Wow, that's really powerful. Yes. It is about the Christ in them. So yes. tap that. Yes. Yes. It, it let it not get into, uh -huh. into you. Yes. So, so pa Pastor Joyce, why is it important for us as a nation at a time like this mm -hmm. to hear, tap, and walk in the revival that is happening, the move of God? It is very important because <coughs> as soon as we capture it and now get the burden, of course I've said how we respond to what they say yeah. will depend on when the move of God is going to take place. Mm. Because when we hear them, it's not just a message you hear and then tomorrow you want to hear it. Actually, we shouldn't get addicted to the sermons they preach. Mm. No, they release a burden. Pick up the burden, it could be prayer, for example. Right. Once you pick up that burden, then you run with it. Mm -hmm. Once you run with the burden, for example, of prayer, then you find that it will now lead you to encounter God. That's mm -hmm. why I say they lead you to Christ. Right. Now, once you take the burden of prayer, as much as you pray, that prayer movement will cause you to encounter God. Once you encounter God as a body of Christ, that's why where now we receive the move of God. We receive the revival. Right. That's when now we see Christ being, you know, among us because now we are no longer us. Uh -huh. Christ can be seen in the body of Christ. Right. Yes. So you know what? We'll give you an opportunity to further mm -hmm. that conversation. Yes. Uh, on the move of God. Right. As you share and just pray together with us. Yes. But finally, mm -hmm. um, there's something happening uh, at the Watchers Hub International. Right. So this is called the Rise of Kingdom legislators. legislators. Hey, yes. Powerful, eh? Yeah. Um, and you, you're, of course, inviting Apostle Michael Orokpo. Orokpo. Yes. Tell us a bit about that as we wind up. Uh, that is very in line with what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, because, as I have said, he's one of the voices that God has projected in our time. Uh -huh. And Michael Orokpo, being a scientist, he's very re relevant to most of us that are in the market place, place yes. right? Yeah. Because he will come as a priest, but still he will be able to talk to some of us whose mind operate differently from just the pulpit. And relate. Yes. yes. And so um, we're having him also because um, when we're talking about legislation now, mm. we're talking about not just the pulpit, but wherever we are called. You're in the media, right. somebody else is in education, yeah. another person is in business. Right. So we need to have people legislating for Christ in every mountain of influence. Mm -hmm. you know, Apostle Michael Oropo is, is, is very good in causing the body of Christ to understand, number one, who they are mm -hmm. as sons, right. as legislators, because we have to be people who make laws mm. in the kingdom of God. Right, right. And we don't respond to what is happening in the community. Mm. We create how people respond. Come on. <laughs> so that's why we are bringing him. Okay. You're going to have an amazing time. That is going to be from the 1st of December to the 3rd of December. All right. We're going to be at the Austin Cathedral. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to have other guests that we still need to bring up on the posters. We also have a very powerful musician there mm. called Abby 
yes, Ojomo. Very right. powerful. You see, the time of revival and the move of God, even music changes. Mm. You want to drink a specific well. Right. And so even with music, mm. you find that you are attracted to different music. Right. And so that is why we, we bring in her specifically All right. uh, to cater for that also. All right. Yeah. So, so, so we want you to go to the Facebook page. There's a contact right there. Can we share the contact? Yes. There's a number if you want to get more information about, uh, you know, the rise of kingdom legislators. There's a number 0759-837-399. I'll just take that again. 0759-837-399. Or you can also go to their Facebook page. It's called The Watchers Hub International. So, Foley, you'll get more information. We still have some time before December. So, tap into this. This is a, These are the voices you need to hear from and tap what you need to tap um, as you move to your next season, as the move of God keeps happening, all right? So, thank you, Pastor Joyce. You're welcome. Thank you for making time. We'll thank allow you, you to me. get to share later on. All right. And uh, I'm sure that will be a blessing to you, right? Yes. So, we continue with the, the boys' amazing music. Of course, that is a blessing to us. Uh, right here on uh, KTN Home, Barakatele.